What's going on to all my intellectual savages out there? I'm Marcus and you're at the channel of the Debt Free Dad where we talk about finances and follow my debt free journey to pay off these annoying student loan debts. Hey, in today's video we're going to talk about probably one of my favorite rules as it relates to investing in real estate, the 1031 exchange. Now, I know if you've been following my channel for a while, you're like, hey, you already talked about the 1031 exchange. I have talked about the 1031 exchange in general. Today, I'm going to go over some of the rules and particular nuances as it relates to 1031 and how it is very beneficial for real estate investing. And, uh, hey, amazingly, I had to do all the research because it's a rule that I may actually use since I announced in my last video that I'm going to be selling uh, one of my investment properties. So, we are going to dive right in. It's been a while since I actually had some lecture time and, and wrote on the board, so we're going to actually write on the board. As always, hey, if you're interested in following my debt-free journey and learning about finance, definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and the bell so that this content can reach more people. Now, let's go to the board and talk about the 1031 Like Count Exchange. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't need to do that because I'm not sitting down at a desk talking to y'all. I'm going to go to the board, so let's just go back over here to the board, 1031 exchange. Okay, so now we're at the board. We're going to talk about the 1031 Like Count Exchange. Uh, my handwriting is terrible. But we're going to talk about the 1031 Like Count Exchange. Essentially how it works is... Let's say I own rental property A, I've owned this property for five years, and I sell this property for $200,000. On the sale of this property, after paying off the mortgage companies and everybody, I make a profit of $100,000. With a like kind exchange, I can use this $100,000 profit, defer any capital gains taxes that I would normally have to pay on this $100,000, I can defer that and use this entire amount to purchase rental property B. Now, there are some conditions uh, to doing a like kind exchange. The first thing uh, that has to apply is the purchase price of the like kind property, which would be rental property B, has to be worth more than the sale price of rental property A. So if, for example, I purchased this house for $150,000, it's $50,000 lower, there could be some recapture of this particular proceeds because I haven't met the requirements of 1031. Okay, now it works perfectly the way the rule is designed. If I purchase this property for $300,000, now it falls perfectly within the 1031 like kind exchange. I avoid paying any capital gains taxes. And this, these taxes are just deferred. They don't just disappear, but I just have to pay them at a later date. We'll talk a little bit about when that payment potentially comes due or if that payment comes due later. Now, there are some things you have to understand about a 1031 exchange. First, it's a way to avoid paying capital gains tax on any profits from the sale of a rental property. The second thing is you have to hold the property in the same name. So if I own this property under Debt Free Dad LLC, when I purchase this property, it has to be held under the same name, Debt Free Dad LLC. Can't get around that. And actually that's probably the best way to do it, to have it under LLC so you can limit your liability in the event there's some litigation down the road, but that's a whole separate discussion. The other requirement is that all of these proceeds, the entire $100,000 profit you made, have to be used to purchase this property. Now, the statute does allow, the statute does allow for things like uh, attorney's fees and title costs and things like that to be paid out of this money, but in general, the entire proceeds, the entire profit you made has to be used to purchase a like kind property that is higher in value than what you sold your initial investment property for. Now that we know in general what a like kind exchange is, we're going to talk a little bit about the benefits. Well, the first benefit is that it allows you an opportunity to increase your cash flow. So, rental property A, let's say my cash flow was $550 a month. By purchasing a larger property, I should be able to improve my cash flow from $550 a month 
potentially to, let's say, seven, eight hundred dollars a month. So that's the first benefit. Benefit number two, it allows to diversify your real estate portfolio. This can be any type of real property. This could be land, a vacant lot, commercial property, a residential property. So let's say investment A was actually commercial property, but because of the pandemic, everybody's working in, is a big concern that you know people may not need the office space downtown, which is what you had. You can actually sell this commercial property and use it to buy residential property. So it allows you to diversify your portfolio. Another advantage to it is just from estate planning. Let's say that I had a large apartment complex and I wanted to leave it to my three kids, but they can't get along. I could actually have it set up to where I use a 1031 like Karen exchange, sell that apartment complex, buy multiple individual residential properties, and then assign each child in my will uh, hey, you have these particular rental properties, child B, you have these rental properties. So it does allow for some flexibility and diversity when it comes to estate planning. But for me, if my kids was acting like that, I'm going to leave it all to the Pitbull Association of America anyway. One of the biggest advantages to the 1031 exchange, and my wife loves this, so you can actually use this rule to buy a vacation property. Let's say I sold my first investment property a over here for $200,000, same example, I made $100,000, I wanted to buy a vacation home in, well, in the, 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 the wine country vineyards out in California, so I used this entire proceeds to buy my vacation home B, which cost $300,000. Essentially, the rules allow you to purchase a vacation home so long as you own the rental property that you're selling, as an investment property for 24 months and with your vacation property you have to rent it out for 14 days a year in order for it to qualify as a rental property even though it can still serve as your vacation home the requirement is hey if you rent this property out for 14 days at fair market value you can qualify for a like kind of exchange you can rent it to a family member so long as it's rented at fair market value so my wife was really excited about that one i had to pull her off the ledge but those are some of the advantages of the the like kind of exchange now in doing my research and you know just kind of reading through the statute and looking at some cases out there there are some particular nuances that lead to pitfalls when it comes to a like kind of exchange the first one is you have 45 days from the date of closing, the date that the sale is complete on A, to identify your next investment property. And by identifying your next investment property, you actually have to, hey, IRS, this is the property that I'm looking at, and you know this is the property I intend to purchase. You also have to inform a 1031 custodian that, hey, this is the property I intend to purchase. So you have 45 days from the date of closing to identify a property. Okay, now 1031 custodian, IRS, you have to identify the property to them. Essentially what a 1031 custodian is, is you can't hold this $100,000 in your bank account because you may get tempted to just go out and buy new bins or go to Vegas and blow it all. This $100,000 has to be held with a 1031 custodian. Essentially a 1031 custodian is a third party who is required to hold these funds and at the time the sale is complete, they'll transfer the fund for purposes of making the purchase of the new rental property. So again, you got 45 days to notify the IRS and the 1031 custodian and identify the property you want to purchase. In this, you can identify up to three properties because as we all know, sometimes sales don't go through. So you can identify up to three properties. The next time frame that appears to trip people up a lot is 180 days. You have 180 days to close on the identified properties that you identify to the IRS and the 1031 custodian. Now, mistake number one that I found a lot just looking through open source research on the internet is people mess up this time frame right here. 45 days from the date of closing to identify the properties that you potentially want to buy. Then you have 180 days to actually close on the property. Well, this 180 days is not from 
the end of this 45 day period. So this is the rule. You got 45 days from the date of closing to identify the property. Then you have 180 days from the date of closing to actually close on the sale with regard to the new property you want to purchase. So a lot of people uh, fall victim to an error by confusing these time frames and the dates and so forth. But both of these dates start at the close of the sale of your initial investment property. And hey, at that closing date, the 45 day clock starts to tick and the 180 day clock with regard to actually closing on a property starts to tick. So another pitfall that individuals have is they try to find a way to pocket some money through this transaction instead of paying a hundred thousand dollar profit I'm gonna pay eighty thousand dollars and no 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 that's not gonna work if you try to pay a lesser amount than the actual entire proceeds the IRS is gonna come knocking at your door you're gonna to have to pay capital gains taxes on that or like I said earlier they are examples where a person sells their investment property, they make a hundred thousand dollar property, and they want to buy property B, but property B costs less than the sale price of property A. That is essentially called the cash boot, and in those examples, when the per property you want to purchase is less than the sale price of the property that you just sold, you will be responsible for paying capital gains tax on a percentage of the income because you haven't met all of the requirements of the like kind exchange because this property is actually less than the sale price of your original property. One thing that you also have to take into consideration at the time of the sale, at the time of the sale, the year in which the transaction is made, you have to report on a form 8824 to the IRS. And essentially, that's just a form that identifies the party involved the sale of the property, the price of the property, but that has to be reported in the year of the sale directly to the IRS. Those are essentially all of the rules as it relates to a 1031 exchange and how it works. Considering that it's a seller market, the 1031 exchange is an option that we're considering using. And essentially, this is how we plan on using it. We plan on selling our initial investment property. We'll Hey, we'll identify properties within that 45 day period. If we find some, we'll make sure the 1031 custodian is holding on to our money. We'll make sure the 1031 custodian who holds our proceeds is insured and bonded so they don't run off with the money. I'll tell you what the 1031 custodian, there's very lax oversight, very lax government oversight. And I've seen a lot of stories out there where the 1031 custodian ran off with the money. So you want to make sure that your 1031 custodian is insured and bonded. So what we plan to do is sell our rental property, take those proceeds, make sure the IRS is notified. We give our proceeds, our income, our profits that we made to the 1031 custodian. And in that 45 day period, we are going to make an attempt to identify several properties that we would like to execute this 1031 on. However, here's the caveat. The market is hot. I mean, properties are going for 15 to 20% more. I'm not necessarily opposed to just paying capital gain taxes on the profit and deciding what I want to do with those proceeds. So we'll go and move forward. Right now, the plan is to move forward with the 1031, to hand that money over to a 1031 custodian. However, we aren't going to force a deal within the 45 day window to identify a property or the 180 day window to close on the property. If we do find a property that we feel is a good deal and will help our cash flow, we'll move forward with the 1031 exchange. If we don't, we are perfectly fine with paying capital gains taxes on the proceeds of our sale and using that money for some other cost, be it, hey, investment, be it, use it to pay off the debt. I mean, a smart move could potentially be, hey, pay the capital gains taxes, invest that money, let it sit, wait till the market cool off, and then jump back in with a larger sum of money to purchase these properties, then you don't even have to worry about uh, the entire 1031 exchange process. So we do have a couple of options right now, we're just researching it to find out what option is best. I think the last thing that I almost forgot to add about the 1031 exchange, you can essentially defer paying taxes I'm not going to say indefinitely, but generally, for the most part, indefinitely. You can do a 1031 exchange for property A to purchase property B. 
deferred paying taxes on the profit. Then you can do another 1031 change from property B to property C, deferred paying taxes on it. And if you do all of these deferments with the 1031 like kind exchange, the great news is when you pass it on to your trust or your estates or your kids who may or may not be grateful, those taxes that have been deferred, a lot of that is relinquished you know, once you're no longer here and you pass everything on to your heirs or descendants. Heirs, I believe, is the correct phrase, but in any event. So that's another advantage. Well, but that's all we have for the 1031 like kind exchange. I hope that information was helpful and it made sense. Uh, hey, let me know in the comments if you've ever done a 1031 exchange. And also let me know, hey, is the 1031 exchange a, a good option to use to create more cash flow? Or do you think that, hey, we should just pay the capital gains taxes on it, either invest that money, pay it towards the student loan debt? Let me know what your thoughts are, what you would do. Right now, we're just kind of mulling everything over. We want to make sure we have all the information. Hey, it should be a video popping up on this screen soon. Y'all check those out. Take care. Be blessed. Peace.